thank you for joining me today. Um, I didn't think I was going to be bringing you a video so soon actually because if you've watched my previous video you'll know that I'm being a, a pattern tester for Jennifer Lauren Handmade uh, and I'm making a coat. That's what the, the pattern is. Excuse me, my knee. My nose is dripping a little bit. It's not Corona, I promise. <laughs> so, well, I hope not anyway. Uh, so, um, so basically, um, I, that is a big task, obviously. But, um, and I didn't think I was going to be making anything else. But because I had to wait for deliveries of outer fabric, then I was waiting for deliveries of interfacing, I have had time to make a few things. So um, today, so I'm going to be showing you things that I've been making. And I'm going to be doing a Mandy Shaw Secret Society unboxing. Hang on. I haven't got it to hand. Let me go and get it. <laughs> right, I've got that. I'm not going to show you that yet. I'm going to leave it a bit later on. Um, but uh, it's there, ready to go now when I need to. So, uh, oh, right. So I'm just looking back on things that you know know I've made. So uh, in my last video, I'd made the Clara... J it's J it's a Jaylee pattern, it's Clara leggings. And um and basically I have been wearing those and I bought the fabric from Guthrie and Garney and I and I did go by their recommendations on what would be suitable and it's been fabulous. They're just so comfortable to wear and uh, and I'm, you know, I'm obviously sewing them okay because I have been wearing them to the gym uh, and I did get involved um, in a charity bike ride in, indoors and basically um, people had to take it in turns to go on the bike and the aim was to um, cycle a marathon and it was to raise money for the charity called Mind and it's about having healthy minds which I suppose is quite important isn't it with what's going on at the moment because obviously you know it's pretty pretty depressing isn't it you know with what's going on so yeah so that's um how I've got on with the leggings uh, a little look back on the Tilly in the Buttons fabric the ones that I made my pyjamas in do you remember me saying I wasn't very happy um after I'd pre-washed the fabric and I'd got some like it looked like I got white residue um but I wanted to you know double check you know had you know my washing put that white right um, white residue in it but I've washed it again and it's exactly the same so it's just the fabric has aged um, pretty quickly and um, I'm actually going to um, cut a sample of that and send it off to Tilly in the buttons I know she hasn't made the fabric but it's in a, a collaboration with the craft cotton company so obviously these uh, fabrics are made in other countries so uh, even the craft cotton company, they not, might not be aware. So I think it's our right, really. We should let them know because they might not know. But I have had another one of the Tilly and the Buttons fabrics in collaboration with the craft cotton company. And that has been absolutely fabulous. From the, It's from the same range, but it's just this particular one that I've not been happy with. So I am going to send a sample off, maybe to both to Tilly and to the Craft Cotton Company because maybe they need to go further back and find out what's going on. So I'll just cross that out. Uh, my pegs came. Uh, if you saw that, I made a peg bag because my peg team went missing. The pegs have came, but I will admit I haven't actually hung anything out yet. Uh, I'm not sure how well the line is going to work because it might need a rod because you, you wrap this uh, extendable line around this thing and I don't know how secure it's going to be but I've got to give that a go. So I'll cross that out. Uh, you may have seen, a few, uh, if you follow me on social media, a few uh, posts have popped up um, of things I'm cooking. And, uh, and this often happens when uh, I've, I'm always cooking, but if sometimes I've not really got much to show, I'll start, you know, pottering around the kitchen, I'll start taking photographs of food. And, and actually, I often take photographs of food I've made, but I never post them anywhere, I just can't on a click away and whatever but uh, I'm sorry if you know you don't enjoy seeing that kind of thing but if you followed me a long time that um you know well at one point it was food was all the thing I used to post about um you know on on Facebook at one point but um but yeah because I'm, I'm passionate about cooking and things but yes yeah, so there, there have been the odd posts popping up uh, but uh, you know it's at my peril because then everyone's like going oh what's the recipe and and then after like you know kind of try and find the 
recipe and you know um you know all one simple sometimes i just throw things in but <laughs> but i have to like try and help people anyway so that's the cooking post and actually i'm hoping this video doesn't take too long today because actually i've got to go ingredient shopping for you know a few meals ahead this week anyway so anyway things i've made right um, and i hope the angle on the camera's okay i've had a bit of trouble um this uh, is a newer tripod because i broke my other one but this one has got a bit of a bit missing now and uh, it doesn't angle very well so it was angling down here and i think it is still a little bit but um I i've kind of got my head in it now but it just i was going to keep raising the legs it's getting high and high and in the end to look at the camera I my head was up here and i thought i can't look at the camera for however long with it up there so i've kind of think i've got it okay so i so what i've made while I've been waiting for things, I've made a head shield. Oh right, do you know what, I haven't got it to hand, but I'll pop some photographs in. The photographs, uh, the photograph, it, they, you know, it does make me look a bit weird. It was really hard to take a photo, shall I put it here? It was really hard to take a photograph uh, and get it right because you're getting all this glare from the, the plastic and it basically it's just an alternative to um, a face mask. I, I do find um, face mask kind of like you know it's gone on that long I'm just sick of it really I'm sick of wearing a mask and I just wanted something a bit different so this is the, uh, the pattern um, here it's a uh, it's called the Headband Face Shield by Beth Studley and her company is called La Femme Beth and I actually bought it uh, as a kit. Reason being is the plastic came in it and actually the, I really like the design that um, I've got. It's just basically like having a hairband on which is quite nice actually but um, it wasn't the one I ordered but I don't know if I've just made a mistake on the website. So that is the one of the makes I've made. Now another make I've made is a bag. Now I've made this bag before uh, and um, uh, it's the pattern is by Owl and the Sewing Cat and it's called the Triple Zip Bag and the first one I made um, it was um, like a uh, oil cloth well it was it was plastic I wouldn't say it was oil cloth it was a plastic like a PVC plasticky fabric it was beige it had pink flowers on and I actually made a matching shopper which I still have actually I use that as a ukulele bag but the bag that I used to use a lot the handbag the triple zip bag it ended up aging in the end I used it so much so I, I was quite happy to make another one and this one is in a different kind of fabric it's not plasticky and um, it's more of a heavyweight canvas and what I absolutely love about it look at the bees now I don't know if you go to craft shows but what I've noticed um, I'll probably put a photograph of me uh, modeling it but um, what I've noticed when I've gone to craft shows there's been a lot of these kind of heavyweight fabrics with animals like foxes and things on and they're just they're like photographs they're just so lovely so I'm really pleased about that and basically it has a zip, zip pocket here a zip pocket here and then you've got your main body of your bag here and uh, and it's got like a spotty lining and even though I'd already got the pattern for this I've bought this as a kit because I wanted this fabric and it came with the strapping and the zips at you know, the right size it came with everything I need and it just it saved the hassle of trying to source everything myself and that that's what the front of the pattern looks like actually the pattern when I bought the pattern last time the picture was different because the fabrics were different but yeah I'm really pleased with that I've not actually used this bag yet because I was trying to keep it all lovely to show you so I, now I've shown you I'll be able to use my bag so I'm really pleased with that and uh, Trace it's Owl and the Sewing Cat and that's Trace and Trace is really lovely so there we go so what have my well I made some more acacia pants now if you watch my last video you'll have seen I was wearing an old Agnes top you know like a, a grey fabric with like deers on and um and I made that like a long time ago it's all the tatty wear it in the house wear it under things for ice skating and um and, and I still had some fabric left and I actually made a onesie for my poly doll um I don't know 
if I can find the photograph, I will pop that photograph in. But I, but please, if it's not there, I'm sorry. But um, but I did make it, and I uh, had a little bit left, so I've managed to cut some um, acacia pants out by Megan Nielsen. Now I've made a number of these pants before. I've made them out of an old T-shirt. I've made a stripy pair. Um, I think I've made another pair. Yeah, I'm sure I have. I'm sure I have, but um, but I made them out of this deer fabric, and uh, and I wanted to have a bash, doing them a little bit different, and use fold over elastic, because I've never used fold over elastic before. So I ordered a pack um, off Amazon, and actually when I've posted a picture of my pants uh, on social media, people have loved my elastic so much. People have asked for a link where I where I got it from, and um, and basically these are all the fold over elastics I got um, like a shiny plain black white with moustaches on it um, a plain white shimmery one a hot pink um, a, a bright blue colour this one I don't know how if you can see it very well it's white and it's got silver arrows all pointing in the same direction uh, a black one with white polka dots on it um, a white one with very small black polka dot dots on it, one that's white with red cherries, um, a glittery white one, and like a chevron, it's blue and white chevron, so I don't know how well they'll come up on the screen. And there was an animal print one. Now what I will say, um, when I made my acacia pants with the animal print one, all I had left after, because you put it round the waist and the legs, is a piece about that much. So I literally probably can get one pair of pants out of this. However, um, it all depends on your size. If you really like these and want to get them, if you think you're a bigger size than I am, um, maybe one size up might be okay, I don't know. But I cut with the acacia pants, I cut out the second to smallest pant, so which I think is the, I don't know how if it's American, so I think it's a size two, I'm not quite sure, so bear that in mind, but here's my pants anyway, you might have seen these on social media, but I'm just so happy with them, and I did make a bit of a joke, because I've always said, you won't catch me modelling my pants on social media, but I said that I love these so much, I'm going to model them. But not in the way that you think, I wasn't wearing them on my bottom, I had them on my head. So uh, you might have seen that, I'll, I'll try and pop that photograph in there. So I was just having a bit of fun trying to photograph that. And uh, so yeah, these are the pants with the animal print. And actually, because I've used the fold over elastic, it's made the pants a little bit bigger actually because when I normally do my elastic I'm normally like folding it over so you're kind of taking a bit of fabric away aren't you so they're normally a little bit smaller but um but yeah they've been okay so uh so there you go there's another pair of acacia pants uh, my husband has bought me a pair of pants actually um some cal a calvin klein um like thong because i can't always wear this kind of pant because when i wear things like leggings and things you just don't you don't really want that vpl but um you can buy and make pants where you don't have elastic round the bottom so I don't are they meant to be like seamless so I might be interested in maybe making some or buying some like that and see how I get on or just wear my thong kind of thing so anyway so those are the pants uh, and I spoke about that fabric so I've got none of that fabric left now I don't think and actually do you know if you saw all the face masks I made for my family I actually used that fabric to make all the ties and that's how, why I ended up cutting out that pair of pants when I looked at what I had left. I made sure I could get all the ties out of it to make five masks and I had a bit left that to cut the pants out and then they've just sat around waiting for me 
ready to do them because I wasn't in pant making mode but it was just while I got that fabric out I just cut them out so what else have I been doing now something less exciting my son he started a uh, college uh, September and uh, and he and he's into skateboarding and he's got these kind of like woven trousers that he wears anyway he went to the skate park um, he has to get the train there it's about an hour train or whatever and uh, he went to the skate park and he split his trousers and it was one hell of a split it was literally right up at the front and virtually nearly all the way around his bottom luckily for him he had a an oversized sweatshirt because you know that's what the kids wear these days and it did come down quite far but say if he was sitting on a train you know he had to be careful so I've managed to um, sew those up for him so it's less exciting and uh, and uh, unfortunately he looked like he'd sat on something and it was right there you know he looked like he might have soiled himself and uh, I've washed them and he hasn't really come out so I'm gonna have to try and have a good go and see if I can save them because they're a lovely pair of um, you know bottoms and it seems a shame doesn't it you know to, for them to be ruined like that so uh, another thing I've done for him with that oversized hoodie that he um, was wearing he does find that it comes down a bit low and he said that he would like it to sit more here so I purchased when I purchased my knicker elastic that's how that came about actually I was ordering this elastic and I think it's an inch yeah an inch thick elastic um what I, I did with his waistband of his um top i cut a hole on the waistband on the inside just a straight line um i basically worked out how much elastic we'd need and um all oh, right, okay. I'm only yeah. doing a short film, so I'll be out in a minute, okay? Cool. All right, <laughs> yeah. So, I um, I lost my train of thought now. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. So, I basically threaded it through, uh, left a little bit of overhang to stitch it together, stitch it together, and then I hand stitched the hole up. So, now he's over the moon when I took his trousers to him. Uh, to another fix them but I said I'll wash them this is before we knew the stain wouldn't come out and he tried it on the night and he absolutely loves it so it feels so, so satisfying because basically when I um, first had my proper machine when I lived in my old house that's all I used to do was alter things and repair things I did things I didn't really do anything creative when I lived in my old house but I was too busy being I was pregnant and not very well and then having a second baby and doing all the baby things and then it wasn't until I got into this house I started to do more creative things so that is that but you know that is the whole main reason not every home really should have a sewing machine shouldn't you so you can do these things for your family so I find it's quite satisfying anyway right ha Halloween. Oh right, yeah. So I was watching Sewing Street recently, and um, and I really love this the one of the presenters, Vicky. She's mentioned me quite a few times, which is really nice. Well, they said do, they were selling some um, autumn fabrics, and they said, "Oh, do does anybody out there make Halloween things?" And they said, "Oh, if you do, send a picture in." I thought, gosh. They've, you know, I've watched at the right time. I make loads of Halloween things. I make them every year and I'm crazy about Halloween. I don't know if it's because, um, I, well, not so much. I've just always loved Halloween. October is my birthday month, so it's not all about that. But my love of Halloween came from being a child. And um, my neighbour, we, like, we used to dress up and they, there used to be this like pub that was in a barn and uh, they used to do a children's disco and we used to put all these like witches' names on and everything and dress up and go to this disco and dance to the monster mash and things and then we used to you know um, use, I don't we did a little bit of trick-or-treat but we mainly used to do up her porch and wait for trick-or-treaters now some years we would absolutely go to town decorating her porch and she only lived about six doors down and uh, and we'd wait and wait for trick-or-treaters and just nobody would come and uh, we'd want to like jump out at them and things but yes, yeah, so my love of Halloween has come really from childhood and then I've tried to do that with my own family and I always got to go to town with decorating and things and, with, and I always took my boys trick or treating and things so uh, 
like, yes, a Halloween is a big thing for me. So when they said this, I just picked a few random things, Halloween things, put it in a little collage and sent it in and they showed it on Sewing Street. So I'll pop that picture in here. Hopefully I can find it now. So, uh, and they showed that on Sewing Street and that was really nice of them to show it. So uh, it was just a selection of things. Um, it was just a quilt I kind of made up as I went along. It was basically, I put sewed strips of fabric together and cut them at a si triangles at 60 degree angle and then sewed them all together. I did kind of think about my layout a little bit, how I was laying them out and things. Uh, I think there's um, a pumpkin bag. I think that's a made by Beth pattern as well. Um, there's my dress. Uh, that, that, um, that was a Christine Haynes basically, but um, not this Christine Haynes skirt to go with it. Uh, and I can't remember what else, without looking at the picture myself, I can't remember what else. I think I put my knitted pumpkin on there. Um, I think, oh actually, there's a, if you see some, if you saw some bunting, um, I'll pop it back on again if it's gets a bit, if you see a bit of bunting and my middle son actually in the picture, um, I made that bunting out of his favourite Halloween t-shirt that he grew out of and I put the word spooky and he hang it in his room, so that's a lovely thing to do. Anyway, so that's that. So I will be, if you've seen my recent video, I have made some Halloween um, things knitted and I am going to be making more um, actually I've, I've mentioned this of my plans at the end I've put a note that I'm going to be making more I want to make the spider and the cat and I've actually ordered some um, toy eyes um, from a place in Northern Ireland because the other ones I've done so far they're just plain black eyes which I've got in the right size but for the cat you, they, um, you need really coloured eyes and the spider because the yarn is black if you put black eyes it's not going to stand out so you need like the ones with the black pupil and then the colour around the outside so I've ordered a pair of blue eyes and green eyes for my spider and my cat so I'll cross that out as further on so that's one of my plans that I'm doing. Anyway, what are we on to now? Mandy Shaw unboxing. Right, I'm going to show you a, um, a photograph of the mini kit uh, that came in it because I've made it last night, you see, because my uh, Mandy Shaw um, kit, um, Secret Society came Saturday and then when my husband was watching football, I made the mini thing um, yesterday evening. So when it was in a a bunch of bits this is what it looked like and I'll also show you we got a paper bag with sweets in there was like a handful of sweets but I did I just get got cracking I think I'd been I'd been to yoga um, and yoga's a little bit late I'm used to eating at 12 and it kind of runs over lunchtime so I was a bit late having lunch so I got the munchies so I ate the sweets but I did manage to take a photograph of one of them before I demolished them luckily so sorry about that and um, the uh, the download of, we get a download this month um, but the have I got a photograph I can show you it's very tiny basically the download that we get to download this month which I haven't downloaded it yet it's a scarecrow to make your own scarecrow and I think it's because around Mandy's area they do a scarecrow thing and they actually do uh, there is you can, I think you can get involved in that fairly local to me I don't think it's my town but it's fairly local but um, I, it's something I've been interested in but never got around to but now Mandy, I, I quite like to make Mandy scarecrow so but it's a bit late now I think that's all done and dusted so next year I might be making a scarecrow so you know watch this space so anyway so this is the uh, the September secret society so you've seen the mini kit as a bunch of bits you know that the download is a scarecrow and, uh, and you get a newsletter and basically um, what can I say about it uh, you basically you get a welcome thing and Mandy just kind of has a little chat with you about what she's doing and things it's not necessarily about sewing and whatever then she talks about the inspiration for the block this month and the block this month um, has got a scare 
crow on it. It's just, they're always a heart with all loads of things on. I know you can't really see that very well. You'll probably see pe people are stitching these, so you'll probably see these popping up. Sorry that you can't see that very well. It's basically, it's say September, and there's all flowers, mushrooms, tomatoes, and a scarecrow. So, you know, all on there. So, I, I, as you know, I haven't been stitching those. So that, and then the inspiration is basically about like the scarecrow thing and whatever. And what the what it says in here, what this month, the, the contents are, is an iron-on transfer for block four, which I just tried to show you. Candy corn sweets, which I ate. Hopefully you've seen the photo. A full kit for a lucky Japanese coin purse, which I've showed you a picture of the bunch of bits, but I've made it, so I will show you that. The newsletter, which is this, plus your download scarecrow pattern by going to the Secret Society homepage, which um, I've told you about. So that's the contents. Um, there's some pictures inside of a few fruit and things in Mandy's garden, the Japanese purse which I'm going to show you and some cakes uh, and a picture of the scarecrow but it's too small to really show you here and then it's instructions on how to make your Japanese coin purse then on the back the recipe is to make Mel's Harvest Tray Bake and apparently it's a lovely moist cake to have with a cuppa so maybe I'll make that, right? Maybe when I'm shopping for ingredients later, I'll think about getting that. So, basically, the make this month was to make the Japanese coin purse. And uh, Mandy has, I think, photographed hers uh, with her bag. Now, if you saw previous things, this was from a previous secret society, that this bag was a download something red on there, haven't I? This bag was a previous download and this was a previous mini project that we got with it. Well Mandy wants to, you to put basically your coin purse. It's to basically complement this. So um, I have taken some, I haven't posted this on social media because we're not supposed to yet. Not until the payment for next month goes out. So I will pop some pictures in but I will try to show, show you here. So that is it I'll turn it to the side like that that's the back and it's basically got a zip that goes all the way round like that and it opens up like that and I've put a pan coin in it so I hope you can kind of grasp what that's like and that was a fun thing to make um what i i want to chat to the ladies that haven't made theirs yet and the experience that i found with mine is i uh, mine came with a white zip and um and mandy says in the instructions you hold your zip i wonder if i've got a zip to hand you hold the end of the zip and the other end of the zip you place some right sides together where they meet and you stitch along there so then your zip is going round in a circle and then basically you're going to be stitching it to the pieces that you've prepared on your domes which a lot of these ladies have made up these domes before so you probably know what you're doing with that but then you've got to attach the zip to this but what I found is when I before I stitched my zip together I held the zip end to end and I held it next to my domes and it was going to be too small so I tried to not hold it end to end and if I'd have just overlapped the zip just a tiny little bit it would have fitted but then there was going to be a bit of a hole in the zip basically the gap between there and there there was going to be a bit of a hole and I thought well if you do want to use it as a coin purse it could fall out however I went ahead and used a different zip. It's just a tad bit longer. I did take a photograph of, of it. So you see my red zip and then the zip that came with it, it is a little bit longer. And when you put that basically end to end, that did fit perfectly. However, what I did think after, um, I could, if you could use the white one, even if it's a little bit small, because what you could do is where the gap is, where the zip, 
wasn't going to come together. You could have just done like a little whipping or a ladder stitch across the zip just to fill up that hole and, uh, and then you would have found that it would have been okay. So just before you decide to sew your zip ends together, I would just double check and see what you think because it might be that we've all got a slightly different zip because the zip on Mandy's photo was red and mine was white so you don't know if there's just a slight difference on some of them so if I were you I would check that really so yeah it wasn't as difficult to sew in as I thought I thought it was going to be quite tricky because Mandy did actually put a link in and how she a quick snippet of how she sewed it in and, uh, and what she does say is you do a running stitch along the edge of the zip, then you sew it in half, then I think you're meant to tighten the running stitch after. But what I did, I did a running stitch around the, around the edges, pulled them together a bit, and it kind of made the zip in the shape that it was going to be when it was going to be all sewn together. So I pulled those in a bit. And, uh, and that did seem to help and then you just literally you do like a ladder stitch from the dome to the zip to the dome to the zip and I just kind of eyeballed it um, you know I would say there's a kind of bit little bit more tape exposed on that side than there is on that side but because it's just all red it doesn't really matter it's just this red stripe going down the middle but I'm really pleased with that I've not made a Japanese coin purse before and, uh, and it's just lovely to have something. And I hadn't done any red work in a while, so I got to do a little bit of red work. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that. So that was a lovely thing to do. So I hope that helps you a little bit when you do yours, just to double check your zip, because it'd be a bit disappointing if you do that and then your zip is too small and it might make it trickier to sew it together. Right, so that is that. Right, um, my roll turned up. Now, if you've watched a previous video, I will say that um, I found a new YouTuber. Um, she's British. Uh, she's called Penguin in Pet. Penguin and Pear and her name's Claire as well and she said she ordered some tracing paper from a company called More Plan and she said the size that she bought. Now I've still got tracing paper left down here. Anyway this roll turned up and uh, basically I didn't I've got one of those ring doorbells so I can check who's at the door first. So this chap was standing at the door didn't have any pass on his hand and he's ringing the door saying uh, and he was very casual clothing and things jogging bottoms and t-shirt and he said uh, I've got a parcel for you and I thought oh okay I said oh, just leave it outside please and he's, and he's going he need like so no I've got a parcel I was going yeah could you just leave it outside please and I thought is he a bit of, of an undesirable trying to get me to the door and he hasn't got a parcel at all because these days you really don't know do you anyway off he, uh, off he went and he left and I'd sure he'd gone and I went out there and there was this big thing so he did have a parcel so sorry to the chap that was at the door my uh, negative thoughts about you but when someone says they've got a parcel and they're not holding anything and you can't see anything you do wonder don't you so anyway it bit me in the bum not trusting him because oh gosh it's so heavy I haven't actually opened it yet and I don't think I'll ever have to buy tracing paper again not unless I don't like it anyway so he, oh gosh I'm gonna drag it over look at it oh gosh it must weigh a ton it absolutely weighs a ton and I just I'm too afraid to open it I think I'm not gonna open it until I know I've got no tracing paper left for tracing clothes patterns left but it's a great size it goes right down here my arm is like let me try and pick it up oh right I'll tuck now remember you lift and tuck your tailbone in this is what they tell you at Pilates tuck your tailbone oh this is it look look oh my goodness it's so heavy so oh gosh hopefully you can't see my address on there don't get zooming in will you so <laughs> I might have to I might have to cut a bit of that out actually. So anyway, so that is my tracing paper. Um and I and I'll let you know what I think of that when I start using it and opening it. So that turned up. Right, um I was oh that was it. The little knits that I've been doing, they're from a magazine. I did show this magazine a picture of my last one. Um the designer, all the designs are by Manda Berry, and I've knitted a number of her toys before. Um and 
uh, the book, uh, it's basically a whole book, it's called Knitted Toys and it was one of those I said I didn't like to start with and then I just just succumbed when I saw it again so and that's where my little um, my little knits are coming from so I'm going to be doing a couple more out of there and I have I have started doing a bit more of my um, partridge in the pear tree project um, I have put it down to, to do this I probably would have been doing a bit of that last night so you've seen these before I've done the made the partridge and the pear and and I'm now working on a turtle dove. Now I know it's two d turtle doves, but I'm only going to be doing one from each verse because obviously if you get to the last bit, you'd be doing 12 of one thing. So I'm just going to do one. And actually I'm going to put, let me see if I can see them. Um, I've got a bunch of bits in here. Look, I've got all wooden le uh, letters that I've never used in here. And I'm going, uh, letters and numbers. So what I'll do is on the turtle dove, I'll put a number two. So whatever verse it is, say if it's, you know, 12 lords are leaping, I'll put 12 on the lord that's leaping and do it that way. And then um, I don't know if I'll make them into something to hang on a twiggy tree or if I'll put it on a bunting or maybe I'll just dot them around a Christmas tree. I'm not entirely sure, but um, I've, been, I've been doing that again. So, uh, so basically that's what I'm up to at the moment. My little things that I'm doing in my hand is my little knit. Obviously, I'm waiting for eyes to turn up because I haven't started knitting anymore. I'm waiting for eyes to turn up. My partridge in a pear tree project and um, things that are going on in here um, is my coat. I've basically got bits of coat everywhere. Basically, it's got so many pieces. The um, the sleeve is just an outer and an, 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 an inner kind of thing. But the front piece has got like four pieces, which they're, I think, all sewn together. The back piece has got four, and the linings are exactly the same. There's, well, the lining for the back piece is actually five pieces. That's all sewn together. So basically, I've got loads of panels that are all sewn together and things. But now, I think the next stage, I'm going to be sewing all those together. So... It's been a big project, but I'm really enjoying it. And actually, because of that project, I know I've got a lot of stuff on my table now because I'm showing you things, but I've actually cleared all my table off. So I haven't got an overlocker on here anymore. I haven't got my twiggy tree. I've just literally shifted everything off. And I'm going to try and keep it that way, actually, because it's so much nicer. Because I end up cutting out clothes on the hall floor, which is not always practical because I have people walking past me, walking on my fabric and things. So if I can, I'm going to try and work off this desk, my cutting table, because I'd mainly normally do all my quilting and bags and toys on this table. But if it was clothes, I'd just lay it out all over my floor. But then I can't use my rotary cutter then. So unless so we shove one underneath sometimes so yeah so that's where I'm at at the moment so coat making so hopefully next video you might see my coat because I can't see me making any other sewing projects now because I think other than maybe I might have to purchase buttons I can't see me sewing anything else other than my coat in here. Um, the only things I will be sewing and uh, knitting are just things I sit when in the evening in my hands. So that's where I'm at at the moment. I hope you've enjoyed what I've brought you today. And, um, and I'll be back soon with some more makes and hopefully a coat. So thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.